What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant and this is all about personal finance and personal growth. And real quick, we're going to jump into a very, very important topic today. I've got my computer with me today so I can go over some stuff more in depth with you as we cover the topic of how to master budgeting and saving money. And just before I go over that, I want to remind you real quick, don't forget, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Patreon. And if you ever want to talk one-on-one -on -one personal finance topics, go to my website. It's linked down in the description. All right, so now we're going to jump into this. And by the way, if you hear any like random loud noises, there are a bunch of people playing in the pool right now and I live like right in front of the pool. So don't mind any of that. All right, so let's jump right into this. How to master budgeting and saving money. The first thing you got to do is master budgeting. You have to understand what's going in and what's going out of your account every single month. This is a very important discussion that I think a lot of us should have much earlier in life. And once you're able to master the skill of budgeting, you'll be able to know exactly what's going in and what's going out of your account every single month with, without even having to really look like you'll just know off the top of your head. And everything else in your life as far as your finances go will come so much easier. Saving your money will get so much easier. Getting out of debt will get a thousand times easier. Anything that you want to do with your finances at that point is going to become so much easier and I'm about to show you exactly how. So the very first step of mastering your budget is knowing exactly how much money you're making every single month after taxes. That's before you put any spreadsheets together, that's before you write anything down on any piece of paper. Knowing how much money you're going to make every single month after tax. So once you know that, you also want to keep in mind how many times you do get paid every month. And right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over to my computer real quick so you can see in real time what I'm talking about. All right, so right now you're taking a look into my computer and what we're looking at is our example. So in our example, we're making $5,468 a month. I wanted to make this number somewhat realistic as far as not being a completely rounded off number. But this person in our example is making a very, very, very solid wage and they get paid twice a month like most people do. And the reason we want to take note of that is because we're going to divide this number in half. 2734 is the half number. So every couple of weeks, this person is making 2700 So after we get the number down, and this is exactly how much we get after taxes, exactly how many times we get paid per month, and this is exactly what the half of that is, now we're going to go over to expenses. Specifically, the fixed expenses. I'm talking expenses that are going to stay pretty much the same every single month. So back to my computer, we're going to take a look right here. As we can see stuff like rent, car insurance, cell phone, gym, blah, 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 all this other stuff you see right here, that's what I'm talking about. These are typically going to stay the same every single month. Your rent's going to go up every year or however often you renew your lease. But generally, these types of costs are going to be the same. And also, I want to point out, you see a few things twice, like you see tithes twice. It's because you get paid twice a month, so you're going to pay your tithes twice a month if you pay tithes. For those of you who don't know, that's just 10% of your income. But anyway, this is stuff you're, you're going to want, when you look at your expenses, you're going to want to go back months, like maybe I would say between three and four months to get a really good idea of what types of expenses you have, because there's going to be certain months where you have certain expenses that you don't always have. For example, car insurance. Some people pay it every quarter as opposed to every month. So in that case, you're going to want to go back to see exactly how much you pay for your car insurance. But no matter if you pay them every month or every quarter, as long as they're on a regular basis, that is what I consider to be a fixed expense. So fixed expenses are both necessities and non-necessities, just to put that out there. The reason we want to start with fixed expenses is because these are coming out of your bank account no matter what. So then... After that, we're going to go over to the non-fixed type of expenses like groceries, gas for your car, miscellaneous, haircut, like uh, ladies, you, you know, you might get your hair done, or your nails done or something like that. You might purchase makeup, entertainment, whatever the case is. And so these, if you decided that you didn't want to buy gas at all this month, you would just not pay for gas. But if this were like a fixed expense, you would definitely be paying an exact amount every single month, right? So these are ones that you can control, you can spend more, or you can kind of like cut back on if you wanted to. Now, I purposely haven't added any numbers yet, but I will definitely get there. But first I wanna quickly get into how you're gonna master your budget. And in my experience, the best way to master a budget is by not looking at it month by month, at least not from the start. Somebody just slammed their door. I hope you did not hear that. And they did it again. They really think I won't turn this camera off and go outside. Anyway, 
Now, once we look at our fixed expenses right here, and I'm just gonna illustrate it real quick on my computer while we're on it. Some of your expenses occur within the first half of the month and some occur within the second half of the month. And I know you know what I'm talking about when I say some parts of the month, you just feel like money is tighter than it usually is in a specific part of the month. Maybe for you is any day after the 16th, you feel like you're tight and you have to wait till like the 30th to get another paycheck to feel like you're back on top again. That's because bills don't really get evenly spread out like they should, you know what I mean? Like for me, the first part of the month, I get more of my expensive bills out of the way. So for example, let's let's say here, I'll put a one for the first half and a two for the second half of the month, just for simplicity, right? So let's say rent, that's the first part of the month. Car insurance, first part of the month. Phone, first part of the month. You know what I'm saying? Gym, second part of the month. Audible, first part of the month. And I'll just do this quick without having to narrate every single thing I do. Okay, so by the way, these are not like my expenses. These are just examples of what could be fixed expenses for pretty much anybody. But anyway, let's break this down. We're, we're gonna start adding prices to these just so you can kind of understand what I'm what I'm talking about here. So let's say the average rent, 1640, without a doubt, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so boom, boom, click the auto sum button. Oh, I guess I have to hit the equal sign first. Making all the rookie mistakes today. Come on, G, G. there we go, boom. All right, so every month costs you $3,407 as far as your fixed expenses alone. So this is your default every single month. That's why I put that right there. That's not like an error or anything. This is your default this is what you were going to absolutely pay every single month without fail no matter what unless of course you delete some of them which we'll get into later then we have what is left your non-fixed expenses which are going to be things that you are in control of how much you spend or how little you spend so it's best to know that you're definitely going to start out with whatever your monthly income is right minus the sum of your fixed expenses. Boom. So that's 2,061 that you have left. So you pretty much have a lot, a lot left. And I, I wanna put this out there. This example is someone who's doing pretty well financially. And when I say pretty well financially, I'm talking about is making a good amount of money. But I can't tell you how many people are in as good of a position as this, if not better, but still blow all their money every month. So that's what the purpose of this video is, to show you how to really control what you have and how to make the most out of it. So back to my computer. So, and then I already have an auto calculator here where it's gonna subtract all of these as I put in more things. But let's just say, groceries are getting pretty high. So let's say per month you end up spending like, I don't know, 500 bucks, boom money left you have 1561 left gas is also high by the way the numbers i'm putting in right now they're goals of which you would like to spend but at the end of the month what you're going to do is you're going to put the real number beside these and see how close you got to the goal this is basically saying i don't want to spend any more than the amount that i'm putting up here so let's say for gas you don't want to spend any more than 200 eating out you know what i'm saying you're like i got 1361 left for this month so let's see, eating out, you know what? I like to go on date night sometimes. I'm gonna do another 200 for that one, boom. Haircut, you gotta be looking smooth. Uh, haircuts nowadays, they'll run you though for about, I'd say if you're if you're in a, if you get a haircut twice a month, it'll probably run you about 60 a month. But then there's still like a lot of money. So entertainment, can be stuff like going out uh, to happy hour with your friends. It could be going out to the club, going out to parties, uh, going out to the movies, going out to comedy clubs, shows, whatever it is, concerts. I mean, it, you could re you could really get wild with this. So let's say you're like, I'm not gonna really go over 300. Like I'm gonna be I'm gonna be good this month. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
801 left. Miscellaneous. Miscellaneous is like stuff that that you would get like if you go shopping, but you're not really like looking for anything. You just go to the mall or something. You just grab some things. But let's say you really. So let's say you're like, ah, I don't, I don't really want to go over 250 with that. Like I'm, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Stuff you see on Amazon. Th this is in the miscellaneous section. Ladies, uh, makeup, nails, whatever the case is, that that goes in the miscellaneous section. And then the money left is still 551. And so what I just covered on the non-fixed expenses portion is how the average person looks at their budget. What the average person does is they'll make a goal of how much they don't want to go over and then however much they have left after their fixed and non-fixed expenses, that's how much they're able to save. So they're saving what is left after they spend, right? That is not how you master budgeting and saving money. This is how you do it. If you're a person who has an excess of over $2,000 after your fixed expenses, you can save a lot more than $551. But just, just check this out. This is how you master your budget. First of all, remember how we went through the ones and twos, like the first and the second half of the month? This is what we're going to do. We're going to split them up real quick. Bear with me. I'll do like a time lapse or something. But I'm going to separate all the ones and just keep them together in a, on a separate side, just like this. So those are ones... So how much does the first of the month cost you? $2,943. Remember, we're getting paid $2,734 at the first of the month. So you're, you're cutting yourself negative in the first half of the month. You know, for the sake of the game, we're going to do the second half too. Because you got to see how this thing works. This might be a slightly extreme example, but it really does be like this sometimes. Like the heavy expenses do happen the first half of the month. I don't know why. You got to go ask somebody about that one. But anyways, so we got stuff like the gym in the second one. Boom. Time lapse again. All right, so how much does the second half of the month cost you? I'll show you. $463. Remember, this... Hold on, let me just... Let me just do this. This is how much you're going to have left. This is not... This is obviously not including what's already in your checking and savings. Like, typically, if someone knows they're going to have this much of an expense, even if they don't know off the top of their head, they know the first half of the month is going to be more expensive in the second half of the month, they're gonna have a little bit of a buffer saved up in their checking account anyways. But for the sake of this, we're gonna run a quick calculation. This minus this. Paycheck minus first half of the month. Negative 209, that's what the red means, negative. Can I get an amen? All right, and so then we're gonna to go to the second part. It's gonna equal your paycheck minus 463. You're balling out of control. 2271. So the reason you want to break these down half and half is because now you can identify what part of the month do I need to watch out for. Not only am I negative 209 just off the top, but what if something happens? What if I get a flat tire? It's going to be another $200. You get what I'm saying? So you get to prepare for things like that. You can go, you can go ahead and proactively Build a buffer that you think is good enough to withstand that little bit that you're going to be chopped off there. But then, here's a game changer right here. I'm about to give you the game on this. You can also identify which half of the month is technically the beginning for you. Because the way I look at it, for me, the beginning of the month is the part of the month where I'm most dominant as far as cash flow. Like when I know I have the most amount of money coming in, the least amount of expenses, that's when I know the month just started. And the reason I say that is because here's where we get to the master, the saving part, right? 
you want to pay yourself first. Remember, I just said most, like the average person who budgets, what they do with their money is this. They get all their spending out of the way, both fixed and non-fixed, and then they save what's left over. But if you want to dominate and really master how to save your money, this is how you do it. You identify which part of the month is the beginning of the month for you, meaning when you have the most money and least expenses, then in this little budget right here, we're gonna go back to my computer real fast. In this little budget right here, you're gonna make yourself a little category that says saving, and you're gonna put a certain amount in there. And let's say a person who's, who has this much money left over, like 2061, let's say you don't wanna go too crazy, but you let's, I wanna save $800 a month. Well, boom, now, now it's in your budget. You can type it in there, right? And now, whenever you hit the first part of the month, when you know you have all that money coming in and very little expenses coming out, you go right on ahead and you have it automatically sent to a savings account, online savings account somewhere far, far away where you don't even have to look at it. You see what I'm saying? And now what you're doing is you're saving your money first and then you're spending whatever's left. That's how you do it. I think uh, Warren Buffett or somebody said it like that. It's crazy. I've been doing this for a long time and I just now realized that Warren Buffett made that quote. That's like a dope quote. I don't think I said it right though. I'm gonna look it up real quick. I'm gonna look it up real quick. I'm gonna get it right for y'all. Warren Buffett says, don't save what is left after spending, spend what is left after saving. You know, so just like I said, pay yourself first. That's how you do it. And in this finance game, you can make your own rules. Just because it's actually the first of the month doesn't mean it's the first of the month for you if you look at it the way I'm looking at it. And then of course, back to mastering your budget. You can also look at out of your fixed expenses, which ones can be deleted if you need to delete it. Like let's say somebody's not looking as good as somebody who's making uh, $5,468 every month after tax. You can take some of this stuff off. You can, uh, you can, for example, if you had to, you could take Netflix, Hulu out. You could say, mm, do I need life insurance right now? Do I have anybody depending on me right now? Eh. You could look at, uh, do I need to be spending $75 on my Wi-Fi? Like, you, you can really look at things like, look at what are necessities and non-necessities, and you for yourself can decide what you can do without if you ever need to cut from your budget. But just make sure you have the prices beside them so you know that, like, just because you cut off like five things doesn't mean you're saving a lot of money. It could be like $10 each, and that might not be that much for you. But if you can find a way to reduce, drastically cut, or even get rid of completely a really big expense that you don't need, now that's how you master your budget, and that's how you can save even more. Now, uh, one thing I do want to point out on here, uh, some people do have in their budget like uh, a spot for investing, which is really good. I, I would recommend anybody get that. But I'll, I'll also caution you on this. If you already work a job that has a 401k, this number up here, after tax that you get in your paycheck, it's already going to come straight to you with uh, your 401k deducted from it. So you don't need to budget for like a 401k. But like, let's say you have a Roth IRA or just an individual investing account for yourself then you would want to put it in here because that's that's going to be extra money outside of what's already invested from your uh paycheck just an fyi and let's say you did let's run this real quick i'll just add 800 to this just so you can you, but you know you know i'm just adding 800s of saving on top of the life insurance so 800 plus 150 that'd be 950 boom so now that's going to change that number so now we have 1200 and something to play with. So now we can't spend like we did because if we do, we're gonna have that negative 249. We can't be having no negatives. That means we're in debt. We ain't trying to get in debt, we're trying to get out of debt if you have debt. And so you might be like, you know what? I'm good on the entertainment this month. I'll, I'll do 100 at the very least, we're good. But I still got 49, so mm, miscellaneous, hey, you know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll do 100, we're good. I still have 101 left. And you see, what I just showed you guys on my computer, that's really the key. So if you wanna get better with saving money or getting out of debt, that's the blueprint to doing it. Like you have to really understand how your money flows and which half of the month you have the most money and the least amount of expenses. Once you figure that out, 
you can decide this is where I'm gonna pay myself first and then spend what I have left. And if you come into some debt, whether it's student loans or credit card debt, you can then put up a plan like, okay, I during the second half of the month, I have a little more money. So instead of saving this much, I'm going to actually put this toward my debt or whatever you want to do with it. It's really up to you. If you're someone who's interested in investing, for example, but you're like, I don't know if a hundred dollars a month is enough. You can now look at, do I really only have a hundred dollars to my name at the end of every month? Or could I do that strategy that my boy Reggie just showed me, you know what I'm saying? And have an extra three, four, five hundred dollars every month and then invest that. You see what I'm saying? And that, my friends, is how you do it. That's how you master budgeting and saving your money. It's going to be a lot easier if you have a fixed amount of income that you can definitely predict every month. But I get that some people have irregular incomes or some people have overtime where they're getting paid on commissions or sales or something like that, in which case you still want to break it down the same way. Now, for those of you who get paid regularly, but your payments like fluctuate, you don't really know because like maybe you get paid off of commissions or or one on one coaching or sales or if you just get overtime some months, but you don't some months, you don't really know. You're going to want to take a more active approach. So whenever you do get paid, you'll just want to go ahead and put the same the same way I'm showing you on in this video, you'll want to do it, but but you'll just do it each time you get paid and your expenses are still gonna be done in the same exact way. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.